this all. Okay, and on to my reference. Now, if you're doing this mm -hmm. on an iPad, you might find this a little bit more difficult. Um, but what you can do is if you're using drawing grid, just line up one, uh, two parts in the same way that I'm going to do this, okay? So vertically down the picture, I am going to draw a horizontal line, uh, sorry, a vertical line, not horizontal line. So all the way down there. So that's my plumb line. That's the first line, okay? The second line I'm going to draw will be through the, um, and this is arbitrary. I mean, you could do it at the bottom of the nose. You could do it at the bottom of the lip. You could even do it through the eyes. I'm just gonna do it through the, um, where the lip is meeting the beard on the bottom lip. And I'm gonna draw a horizontal line there. So two lines, okay? So I'm sure you can all manage that. <laughs> do you need a moment to do that? My, if you can see here, this is an A4 um, printout that I've got on the left hand side here. And if I take a measurement like that and I go onto my piece of paper, it's going to make the head that big. Okay? All right? And if I did that as same size for same size, so that would be no scaling at all. So that would be just taking the, the measurements off here, straight onto here, job done. Okay? But I want to make it slightly bigger because I've got a bigger piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the screw on the slidey bit. Okay, yeah. and I'm going to move it towards the center because it's not going to be a massive jump in scale. I just want a small jump in scale. <coughs> so I'm just going to move that to about the third one along. Let's try that. Can't get it to move. Unscrew it. You've got to unscrew it. <laughs> it doesn't just slide. <laughs> then if I want a bigger one. Okay, so let's do that. <coughs> there we go, like that. Whatever you want. Okay, so top to bottom. <coughs> and now look how big it's going to make it. Oh, look, that's a good guess. So it's probably a little bit too big still. So I'm going to come down one more. Yeah, because you have to make it how big it is to make yeah. or not. Okay, yeah. so do that up again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then this hopefully will be the right size now. So then I measure from the top of the head to the bottom of the beard again. Okay, like so. And that's how it's going to fit on my paper now. So you see it's just coming within the full screen size. Yeah. Okay, the yeah. second measurement I'm going to do is just check the width. Because there's no point you checking the height and not checking the width. Because it might be long enough to fit on your paper, but if your paper's too narrow, then it's, it's going to go out the side. So... I do a measurement across the width, the widest part that I want to get in. So if I wanted to get in his shoulders as well, I'd need to measure like that. Okay. But if all I'm interested in is the portrait, then I just measure that element, turn it around and that will fit nicely. Okay. So once I figured out that that's now going to fit on here at this scale, I don't adjust the screw. The screw must stay put now. Okay. Don't fiddle with it. It stays where it is. It doesn't get moved at all. Okay. So the first measurement I'm going to do is I'm going to measure where I want these two lines to come and then I'm going to draw them on my picture. Okay, nothing else, just the two lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down from the top. So the top of his head is going to start about here. Okay, so I'm imagining the top of his head is that mark there. Okay, yeah. so that mark relates to that mark. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to measure first where this plumb, this horizontal yeah. line is going to come. Mm -hmm. So I measure down from that line to where that where that um, horizontal yeah. line is here. I turn my thing around. I put the tip on that one. I put the bottom on this one, and that's now my horizontal line. So I now can put this. That's across. in the middle. That's more or less in the middle. Yeah. It's well. It's. It's um, a little bit lower than the middle, but on my, well, from where I'm viewing it, but yeah. Oh, I meant your vertical, because your first vertical was the middle, wasn't it? I haven't, well, I haven't put the, the verticals just through his eye, through his left side of his nose, down through the left side of his mouth on my one. So it's just yeah. past, it's not quite centre, it's just off centre. So there's more on this side than there is this side. Okay. All right. So you're, you're going to do the same on the big, on your... One you're transferring it to. Yeah, so I'm now going to find out where the vertical is going to come in. Okay, so well, what I need to do to know where the vertical is going to come, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is measure the full width. All right, so the full width of the head is that big. All right, 
So that's now if I want that side of the hair and that side of the hair in, okay? Now I need to decide where on my paper I want that head to come, if that makes sense. If I do it right over here, he's gonna be right on the edge of the paper. If I do him too far that way, he's gonna to be too far in the middle. So I'm just gonna keep him relatively centered and I'm gonna make two marks, one there and one here, which now relates to that mark and that mark. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So now that I found the width, which is this measurement here, I can now find where this line is. So I, all I do is mm -hmm. I measure in from one of these marks to where that line is. Mm -hmm. So I can measure in from there to my <laughs> vertical. Okay. Turn it round. And that's now where my vertical is going to come. <clears throat> and then you know your drawing is going to be a lot more accurate. Okay, and then we can then flesh it all out. So the first one I'm going to do then is I'm going to measure from this line here to the bottom of his nose. Okay, so we're not trying to figure out where the nose comes. We're just trying to figure out what the distance from this line is to where the bottom of the nose is. And that's all we're trying to work out. So all I do is that, and that's the bottom of his nose. Okay, that doesn't tell me where in his face the nose comes because we haven't done a horizontal measurement yet. All it says is where up the face his um, nose comes, okay? So the next measurement is gonna be to the cornea of his eye, okay, this right-hand eye. Ah. Okay, so I just measure from the line to the cornea. And again, I do another mark just to say where that is. If I want to, I'd then do another measurement to the top of the eyebrow, which is going to be very close to the cornea because it's not that much higher actually, which is about there. I could do a similar measurement to the forehead, which is about there. And again, I can put that on there. And if I want to, I can actually even do another measurement to where um, the lower part of his hairline is about there okay so i've got a whole bunch of vertical measurements okay so now the bottom of our nose is sort of here i'm just going to make a line a bit wider for that the wing of our nose is here and the other wing of our nose is there so it's kind of box shaped and i'm not worried about trying to make it a nose just yet i just want to know that that's going to be my nose shape okay. now i'm going to measure up to the eye line because the next most important thing is because his face is not completely straight on so he's not looking dead straight at the camera mm. he's got a slight tilt in his head towards the towards the left okay if you can see that his left eye is lower than his right eye which then means that his left eyebrow is lower than his right eyebrow the left temple is lower than the right temple if you could see his ears then you would see that one was higher than the other one nostril is higher than the other nostril one side of the mouth higher than the other side of the mouth okay so we must make sure that everything kind of tilts slightly otherwise you're going to end up trying to draw that but straight on does that yeah. make sense yeah. So, yeah. so how do we do that so obviously it's fairly complicated to try and figure that out so what we need to do is we find the cornea measurement again okay the one we did before yeah. okay which was yeah. uh, which one was it let's find it which one it was now uh, do, do, do. I think it was one of these ones, that one there. So this measurement here, okay. We then find out where that is horizontally across. So we now measure from the center line to where the cornea is. So I know roughly where the cornea actually is, which is here. So that's where his eye's starting. Does that make sense? So what I found out is that bit there. Yes. Everybody get that? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and figure out this line. So there's a hidden line across the eyes like that. So I'm just going to draw a line in just to show you. I wouldn't normally do this, but this is just to show you what I'm trying to do. So there's a line going like that across his eyes. Okay. Yeah. So what diagonal. we're going to do? Yeah, the diagonal line. So I can, if I want to cheat, is I can do that. I can put a ruler on that line and then just slide straight across. Oh, yeah. 
to <laughs> my <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> We like yeah. that bit. And yeah, I do like that bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bit of technical that. drawing for you there. That's what they do <laughs> with the old technical rulers. So yeah. you would do that, come across, oops, make sure it's the right angle. So try not to turn your wrist when you do it. It's quite hard to do yeah. this actually flat. Normally I'd work yeah. more upright. So I'm not actually over the top of what I'm doing. I'm sort of seeing it at an angle. I'd rather um, do it that way. There mm. we go. So it's almost right. It needs to come down a little bit. Okay, one. so, and I do this all the time, you'll, you'll make a mark or you'll make a line, and it's not always the right line or the right mark, but once you've made that mark, it's easy then to compare it against mm -hmm. what, you've, what, you sh what you should be doing. Okay, so mm -hmm. if the line is maybe too steep, you go back, you check it, and then you say, oh, actually, no, it needs to be more like that. And then it's easier to know how much more of a degree you need to um yeah. make it rather than if it's on a white piece of paper and you make a line it's very very difficult to see what angle you need to make it at <laughs> this is almost like learning a language yeah. so drawing drawing yeah, in its yeah, own yeah, right yeah. is has got a lot of um um elements that after you, it's almost like learning to drive once you've learned them and sure. they start to become second nature you wouldn't do any of this anymore no um, no because you don't need that, to it's all yeah. done no. it's kind of done in your head yeah, but of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, to teach it, yeah, I I'm trying know. to explain yeah. some of that that yeah. thinking process so that you can you can do it. You know, you learn it. All right. Yeah, of course. So yeah. what I'm going to do now, I'm going to find his eye. So the outer part of his eye here now. So I'm going to measure from the central line out to the um, far side of his eye, which is going to come about there. There. Okay, and we know where it's going to come on our um, sort of angle because we put that in already. So now this is where his right eye is going to come. Okay, so what I could do if I wanted to is I could just start to flesh this out a little bit. So there's a bit of angle through his eye there. And we can just guess this now or we'll just judge it and actually start to try and draw, say there's his eyebrow somewhere. Um, and feel your way for where you think those those shapes should come, um, which yeah. is a little bit more how you might normally draw. You know, if you were just sort of guessing stuff and and, and sort of just trying to figure out where things ought to come. Um, mm. But you're doing it over over this sort of skeleton, so yeah. you know things are roughly a little bit more accurate. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to find where the outer part of his face comes. What pencil are you using, Stuart? Here, this is just a, oh, this one's quite a light one. Um, about a 2B. All right, yeah. Or, not. or a H HB or 2B is probably quite good for um, this initial roughing. Or not to be. That is yeah, the or question. not to be, yeah. <laughs> just thought I'd add a bit of literary nonsense. Very good, thank you, Sue. Always That's a pleasure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we love your nonsense, Sue. Yeah, that, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you are the only group of people in my life that do. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just found the um, the bump on his head where it kind of comes in, and then that goes, oh, sort of up this way before it then starts to come into his hair, which is going to curve in there. I haven't somewhere. even noticed that. No, I What's haven't. <laughs> the bump. You noticed what? The bump. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the, that's the importance of looking properly. In my email, yeah. I said about, no, about really bump. looking. What do you mean the bump where his eyebrow is? Well, if, oh, you, look at, yeah. if you look here, yeah. um, this is his cheek. You see that lump there? Yeah. 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 But that's his cheekbone. Oh, yes. Yeah. This part is like the, the, the eyebrow ridge yeah. here. Yeah. And on yeah. him, because he's quite... Well, I don't know. I mean, his eyelashes look very low, but I think this is the area of his eye socket, that whole area. Yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously his bump comes, you know, a little bit higher yeah. and then you're into the temporal lobe, which is kind of oh. up here, um, which is why you get those different changes in angle, um, mm. which you need to look for because they're quite, they're quite important. Otherwise, if you don't get them in the right place, it's not going to look like this chap. No. It, might look like, it might look like a person, but it won't look like this person. No, yeah. that's quite certain. So let's just that's figure out one where, of life certainties. where the rough part of his cheekbone is going to come. So the cheekbone is going to be about there. So that's that measurement to there. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And then we've got an angle then starts to cut back. So that starts to cut back this way. And then we're into the fold of his cheek, which is about there, okay? I'm not going to take that too far. We'll just rough it in. So I think it's about there. So that comes up a bit more. Yep, that'll be all right. And then we've got the whole underneath his eye, you've got this big droopy, saggy bit. <laughs> it's that right. Um, <laughs> that's a medical term, is it? It's a very medical <laughs> term. Yeah, a droopy, saggy, saggy bit. bit. <laughs> Bags under his eyes. So I'm just going to rough that in a little bit. Who uh, painted this? It's not a painting, it's a photograph. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I found a... I just found a website that does had loads of um, portrait images on. I just got sort of oh, scrolled through see. and had a look. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, this one's royalty free as well, so that means we can oh. do what we like with it. So, yeah. Um, so let's just measure <coughs> in in there. So that's now the. Um, let's measure to that side. That's very narrow. You would never think it was that narrow, would you? This no, you measurement here, there to there. Very narrow. Yeah. Normally you'd make that very, very wide. Now, generally speaking, the distance between the eyes, so this to, to find the other eye, is about an eye's width. So yeah. let's just see if that is true. So if I take the eye width, which was, oh, got to get my measurement right in there. Let's make sure that is the right measurement. So that's there. Um, yeah. Yeah, so there to there should be roughly from there to there, okay? So there to there, roughly there to there, which is about right, because if you look at the, the horizontal line that we've drawn, his cornea mm. on this right, on this left eye is inside that line. Yes, and I stress area, not eye. Okay, it's more we're just looking for the shapes rather than actually painting or drawing. <laughs> so let's just measure up from the line to where the cornea of his left eye is, just to make sure we got that roughly in the right place. And there we go, that's about right. So now I can measure the width of that eye <coughs> or eye shape. So the eye shape will come to about here. Now that I know that that's relating to this corner of his eye here, I can now find this edge. Okay, so I'm going to take a line like that on his cheekbone from my central line and just transfer that over just so I know roughly where his cheek's starting. So we know the cheek is coming kind of down and then it starts to curve in, similarly like this side. It's really it extraordinary how small the features are. Yeah, absolutely. When you start measuring and really drawing, yeah, because yeah. we as humans we put so much importance on 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 the the features, we often draw them too large. Yeah. So that's one eye. So we got one eye here, one eye here, and then over the top of now where these two points. Can you see? So angles start to become very very important when you're looking at um, drawing faces and that kind of thing. So. If you look at this line on the um, on this eye, mm. and can you see where it changes direction? It goes downhill, Get me if you want, if you need and then it goes down again into the cornea. If you go vertically above that, you can see that there's a change in angle in the eyebrow. So if I come above that, I know that I've got a change in my eyebrow line. So that starts to go downhill to the left, and that goes downhill to the right over mm. the over the eye. Okay, yeah. I'm just going to measure up just to see if that's roughly in the right place. Oops, there we go. So, yep, there we go. So it's a little bit high, but we can come down and touch on that. Okay, so that's the start of his eyebrow there on that side. And then we've got lots of wrinkles and bits and pieces going on here, which you're not going to worry about too much just yet. I'm going to try and find out where his eyebrow is on the right. So coming out from my central line, measure across. So that's the start of his eyebrow. 
need to find out how high up the eye it comes. So let's just measure up. Turn that round. And there we go, we're pretty much on the spot just there. And then if you notice, the eyebrow makes the fold over the eye. So it comes down over the top of the eye there. It goes yeah. uphill and then it goes back downhill again. Kind of like that. Okay, we're not gonna worry about it too much just to give, the, give us an idea of what it's, what it's doing. So now let's try and figure out some more of the shape of the head so that we actually look like we've got a head here rather than just this funny mask looking thing. So now I'm gonna find out where the, the, the general shape of his hairline is gonna come. So I'm gonna measure out from, the, um, from this point, okay, out to where the edge of his hair is on the left hand side. So that comes to about there. So his hair is here, okay? And now I can actually take a line coming roughly up in this direction. Doesn't have to be too accurate, just to give me an idea of where it's coming. And then it starts to crest over. So it's cresting over here. And again, we're not entirely sure. These are just guesses at the moment and they will change just to give me an idea of where it's coming. Let's spin that round. His head's gonna to come to a back there. There we go, I'm too far off then. And then we've got this funny mohawk thing going on up the top there. Now, what you have to be very careful of when you start to do this, okay, obviously we've got this lovely structure that we're kind of basing all this on. Um, but what lateral and vertical measurements don't do is it doesn't tell you where this element is in relation to say his eye or his cheek or anything else. So what you must try and train your eye to do is say you're trying to put this funny piece of hair into the top up here. You must relate it back down and look down or look across to see where it comes in relation to the other elements within his face. Does that make sense? Otherwise you'll end up drawing yeah. that might be way way too far to the left or way too far to the right okay it's quite an important exercise to do and, mm -hmm. and effectively what you're doing is you're just taking you're using your eye and you're doing this so you're checking that you might be checking that and see where it hits yeah see where that comes down hits in the middle of his eye um, oh, checking see. that coming down yeah. okay so when you do it on your drawing it must do the same thing yeah. does that make sense yeah, yeah. all right Later on, we'll be doing it a bit more horizontally and vertically to sort of see what's going on. Mm -hmm. But for the moment, you want to just try and train your eye to, when you're making an, a mark somewhere mm -hmm. on your paper, try and relate it to other things on your paper that you've already figured out, particularly in this area, because we know that this is area is, is well measured and it's, it's a good area. Yeah. Try and relate back to that. Okay, and then everything will start to become more cohesive and be a bit more linked together. Okay, mm -hmm. don't draw things in isolation. So don't draw that hair in isolation of the fate or the features and so on. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's his forehead roughly there. So the crisp coming up and over. And I'm looking where it roughly starts in relation to the eye. So it comes from about here. And it comes over there and it comes way past the brow here. So they're coming out and then you've got all these lovely funky hair bits going on over there. And that comes way out over this side, down, and then it starts to come in about the nose level, look. So there's our mm -hmm. nose. So our hair needs to start to cut in about here. Okay. And then it will come back out. And we'll, we're gonna check all this, but I'm just gonna get some marks on here just to see where all of this is coming, it comes down, and then we're into our beard, which comes all the way down, wiggle, 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 all the way through there. And then we're coming up. So this hairline comes down below the nose line, if you look there. So the hair comes below the, air, um, the hairline. Mm -hmm. So it's lower on this side than it is this side. 
which reinforces the idea that he's got a slight tilt in his head. Um, and then we've got that, and then his shoulder actually comes from the back there, which we're not going to worry about too much, but we're just going to give a little indication of that. And then he's got a hoodie, it looks like, a bit, bit of jumper that comes around, and then his shoulder, which comes out over there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do something that may seem a little bit odd, but I want you just to go with it, okay? So generally, when, we, when you draw something, you're always looking for edges of stuff. You're always looking for um, where does that edge meet the other edge and how do I relate those edges together? But when we paint, we don't paint in edges, we paint in masses. Okay, we paint in um, large, big shapes, and then we break those big shapes up into smaller shapes, and then those smaller shapes into smaller shapes again, okay? So it all kind of um, layers on top of one another when we paint, okay? So when we draw, if you're drawing to try and improve your painting, you want to be thinking about it in terms of um, uh, those larger masses of shapes rather than just say the edge of the hair the edge of the eye and all the rest of it We're trying to think about how we would um, Logically think about it to paint it. Okay So what I'm going to say to you to do now is we're actually going to start to look at how the shadows falling on the face So if I was to draw We're not going to do it really really accurately, but we're just going to give us a basic um, mm idea of where this shadow comes on his face because yeah, yeah. we've got a shadow going all the way down the left hand side of his face yeah, it? It yeah. Cuts. yeah almost yeah. like um you know, like a, i don't know what you would call it like a a crack in the ground yeah so yeah. what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say that that's the edge of his forehead here because i'm i'm coming from this point and then i'm just going to roughly try and draw that shadow shape as it comes down his, his face. Not 100% accurately, but just to give us an idea about where it's coming. So it kind of comes down here, then it comes down to where roughly his eyebrow is. And then it comes into the wrinkle of his nose, which is actually below his eyebrow, so I need to come down a bit there. Then we've got all these wrinkly bits here. Then it comes down the side of his nose and it's coming down the side of his nose at a slight angle. Okay, it's not totally straight. It's coming down at a slight angle. And before we get to the bulbous part of the nose, it actually turns the corner, comes forward, and then curves round. And then it comes back on itself a little bit, it goes over the beard. So the beard is kind of here. Then we've got the mouth, kind of as it goes round the mouth. And then it comes back on itself again. And then we're into the lower part of the beard. Oops. Comes up. Down. And then we're away into the lower part of the beard over here. Okay. So everything basically on this set, on the left hand side of this line, obviously we've got more shadow here, is going to be in shadow. Whether it's full shadow, half shadow, um, is not the point at the moment. But the point is that everything on this left hand side is out of the light or turning away from the light. Um, let me just put a little bit more of that around, around here. So we've actually got a, a V thing there. We've got the eye coming over here. This comes all the way down, actually comes in a bit, and then it comes in, and then it goes down. So if you look here, this is the eye socket. So it comes in, down, and then around. Yeah, and then it comes back on itself, up mm -hmm. to the central part, and then we're back in joining the um, joining the shadow on the left. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what effectively I could do now is, before I do anything else, is I could just put some shadow through the whole left-hand side of his face, so that I'm saying to myself, Everything that falls within that side is in shadow. And everything on the other side is in light. Let's just do that. What pencil are you using? This is still just a 2B, this one. 
Mm. They're still pretty light. Oh yeah, I think so. yeah. Okay, so this is all in shadow. Mm. Obviously there's some cuts in the shadow, but we're just making some generalizations at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, just to uh, get the ball rolling. So we've got some shadow at the top of his head there. And then we've got some shadow outside here. Where that is. This is all very dark out the back here. I'm not even sure what that is. We won't worry about that. We'll leave that for the moment. We've got some shadow coming off the wing of his nose. So the wing of his nose is here. And look, if I just draw this funny shape that I'm seeing. So if I draw this, which is almost like a funny triangle. Mm. Well, it's almost like a bird pecking or something. Um, <laughs> it kind of comes in, down, comes back on itself, and then it comes down, and then it makes this funny little dog leg there. That then becomes the wing of his, of his nose. Yeah, and then I can put that in shadow. Okay. Yeah. So that's that. And then we've got some very light shadow here, which is forming the side of his head. So we'll put some of that in. We've got hair which is coming around here. We'll worry about that for the moment. <coughs> All of this is very, very dark. Now, this, if you look here, this is in shadow, but this is white. You see the beard is white, but it's within the darker part of his, mm -hmm. of his light structure. Yes, yeah. So if you look at this side, it's very bright. Mm -hmm. and this side's a bit darker, but it's oh, no right. way as dark as any of this. Yeah. But it's yeah. in the same light conditions, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is when you come to painting, this is what gets very confusing. It's like, well, how dark do I make that compared to that? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very confusing. But anyway, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually start to draw the edge of his beard so his beard kind of comes so what i'm trying to do now is define where this bit comes it's a, bit, it's a tricky bit mm. sort of that bit there <clears throat> so it kind of comes back on itself it um is actually meeting the side of his face which is coming through here so we're going to wiggle our way back here it makes this sort of funny little i don't know what it's almost like a little bat sign <laughs> Um, <laughs> kind of comes back on itself there, comes over, around, all the way down, and then we've got another little funny, almost like a fish. Look, we've got a little fish here. Yes, we've got a little fish cut out there. Yeah, and then we've got the bottom of the beard, which comes all the way down, then comes back on itself. And then we're coming up and then back to where we started. Okay, so all of this is in shadow. Now, all of this is in darker shadow because this is his shoulder. So we can actually make this darker. Sorry about that. So I'm just using the side of the pencil just to darken this up. Let's bring that down this way. Continues all the way down. We'll do a little cut out bit in here. And again, not as dark, but it's darker on this side. So let's just pop that in. Okay, now if I were painting in oils or I were painting um in acrylics this would be enough drawing to get started i wouldn't need to do any more than that and then i could start massing in my shapes mm. because we're going to do this in watercolor well i'm going to do this yeah. in watercolor, mm. um, <laughs> i need to find a little bit more um, where some of these internal structures are otherwise it's going to get a bit confusing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to figure out where the um the the cheek actually comes so the cheek coming down there and then we've got a funny little shape in here which we can knock out which is on the left hand side of the nose which comes down about there relating it back to this one 
it comes up and then it meets the wing of the nose and then comes back on itself. So all of this is dark. So this is actually the very, very dark piece that um, comes under the cheek and away. And then That's this almost piece, part of the beard, isn't it? Yeah, it's, the, it's the start of the moustache, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then we've got the, the lower part of the curve for where the nostril would come, which would be about there. And then it turns where the cartilage of the nose is here. So the reason why this bit's important is because um, we have different planes. I've talked about planes before, haven't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So different yeah. surfaces. So effectively, this part of the nose is um, in facing us. So it's flat onto us. Yeah. The side of the nose here now is actually going downhill. It's going in this direction. Okay. Right. The cheekbone is actually going, or the cheek is actually flattening out again. Do you mean down. that's where, sorry, Take do you again. mean that's where the light falls when you say it's going away from you? No, so it's nothing to do with the way the light falls, it's the underlying structure of the face. So if I okay. hold my hand, so yeah. this part here is like my hand facing the camera like yeah. that. Yeah. The bit on the nose there is like my hand tilted away at that angle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah. you see, you've got a slightly different light condition. Yeah. This yeah. hand. Yeah. You do this hand. Obviously, yes. if it was in shadow, it would be even more. But um, yeah. so this is kind of flat. It goes like that. It goes across. Then it comes down the hill. Then it goes yeah. across. Then it will tip over again. Yeah. And then it will be going down. Can you see how you get this sort of undulation in the um, in the surfaces? I can, yeah. Okay. I was, I, I've always, yeah, I've always found planes really difficult to understand. Yeah, yeah. all it is is just a different Handle change it. in surface. Mm. It's it's just the change in the direction of of, of a piece of surface. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Nothing more complicated than that. Um, but what it does, it, it just gets complicated when you've got multiple surfaces. Okay. okay, like look at this furrow here, for example, on his on his head. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like a crease in a in a in a piece of cloth. Yeah. So we've got roundness going this way. Yeah. You've got roundness going that way. So you've got lots of different changes. Yeah, yeah I see. Um, going in different directions. That's where it gets very complicated. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's just make that furrow a little bit darker there. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to darken up what's called the, the, the termination line of where the shadow is. So the shadow is coming in there and then we've got a shape where his eyebrow is here. So I'm just going to define where the eyebrow is a little bit stronger. And that goes away over there somewhere. Uh, the eye, it's really hard to see on flat. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so the eye actually curves up this way a bit. And then it comes across, then it goes back down. And then I'm not going to define the bottom of the eye. I'm going to define some of the structure under the eye. Because I know, because the eye is, um, if you think of like a sphere, mm -hmm. which is the, the eyeball, is covered in mm -hmm. skin. So you've yeah. got a roundness, you've got a roundness to the eye socket that's not always apparent. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, this part comes out, then it goes across, and then it goes back on itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's coming around like that. Similarly, on the top of the eye, you've got some of the, the structures going this way. Yeah. Okay, so let's get the eyebrow to come down a little bit more here. So it kind of wiggles its way through. I'm just going to darken up where I think the eye socket is. Somewhere in there. I'm not going to worry too much. Just in there somewhere. And then we've got a darkness over this side. So again, this eye kind of comes down and then it goes back on itself. So the majority of the bulbous part of this eye is actually on this side. The eyebrow kind of cuts over the top, and then we've got a little bit of the 
the the pupil showing there not too much we'll just knock a bit of that out with the putty rubber Good. we've got the eyebrow oh sorry eyelash comes over the top there this thing comes back towards all of these nice craggy craggy folds and start to put in put some of those in okay and really at this point it's kind of um um just wing it sort of almost eyeballing and um drawing what you think you see uh, just getting some slightly darker marks where um some of these structures are yeah. so then that's the corner of his face goes up there we've got <clears throat> The wrinkles coming up and over and comes away and then we know it's very very dark in here but I'm just going to make some dark vertical lines because I know his hair is going to come in there somewhere yeah. and then it will look more eye like. <clears throat> so let's reduce the tone in here because that's too light. Make this a bit darker. A little bit of a highlight just in that eye. Just leave a teeny bit of light shining. Um, I've got some hairs growing over that way. Get those in. There's a bit of the eye fold which we can get in that comes down the slightly stronger line. There's some eye fold on this side we can get in. Lots and lots of wrinkles, and I mean, you can go to town on the wrinkles if you want to. That's because he's B to C. <laughs> he's got very leathery skin, I think. Where the, the shadow um, turns over into the light. Now, on the reference, you can't see it very clearly, but generally speaking, the, the darkest part of any shadow is actually the bit nearest the light. So, what I'm going to do is just darken this up very, very lightly. Okay. More so than the. Um, more so than the core of the shadow. And then it will start to um, make this feel more um, vaporous, you know, almost like you can see into it a bit more. So mm -hmm. all you do is you just darken up the, what's called the termination line, which is the bit between the light. So the light and the half tone. So effectively what you've got is you've got the darker part like that. Oh, can you see that? I'm too high. So you've got the darker part like that. Then you put a lighter bit of shadow and then you've got your light. Okay. And then the other side of the shadow is darker than the half tone, but not as dark as the dark bit. Yeah. yeah. And then you get that, this kind of effect where the, um, the shadow feels more, vaporous like you can see into it so the hair comes up and goes over but let's knock all this down this is all half tone so the idea as well would be to put all this tone down first and then you put all your you would pick out all of your little shapes to define all the rutted areas within the face. You wouldn't try and draw them, well, I wouldn't try and draw them first um, and then kind of backfill it. It's better to put down a flat piece of tone and then over, you know, into that, you then work those other shapes. It's a much more efficient way of, of, of doing it. Um, so we've got some hair that comes down through there. So this is pretty dark up here, curves over. And then that's pretty dark there. So we need to darken that up. There we go. So then in the middle here, we've got, um, I'm just gonna cross hatch through that. Everybody know what cross hatching is? 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's a very useful way of building up, building up the tone um, in, you know, in, in the drawing. You still use there, Stuart? Sorry? Still using HB? Yeah, it's all the same pencil. The man only changed the pencil, yeah? It's still the 2B, yeah. 2B, right, okay. Yeah. Um, if I was to go too dark, um, then it's almost like, as I said, in watercolour, where you end up over-darkening things too early and then it's <coughs> quite hard to come back from. So um, I'd rather just press a bit harder with this same pencil than go to say a very, very dark pencil just yet. Mm. I mean, you might need to go to a darker pencil to get more of these really rich, very, very dark bits in, but for the moment this 2B is fine, you know, it's doing, it's got enough tone left in it to be able to do these darker bits. Um, so there we go. So we've got some little hairs coming off there. There's a bit more tone in the eye. Let me darken this up a bit. So to darken it, all I'm doing is just pressing a bit harder. So the harder you press with the pencil, the more tone you're going to get coming off um, and depositing the graphite. <clears throat> Obviously, most of you should know that already, but um, you don't okay. always have to to go to a darker pencil, a softer pencil. What you can also do as well, I think I've showed you this before, um, if you get a very hard pencil, like a 2H, so this is a 2H, so you see where I've just put all this graphite down around his eye? This is very, very light. You see, it's not gonna go very dark, depending on how, you know, I can press quite hard, but it's still gonna be very light. But if I take this same pencil and I start to work it into this area, it's going to make it go very dark. So it's a lot darker than that was. Yes. Um, and all that is doing is it's just basically taking the graphite <laughs> um, we put down and kind of pushing it into all the little holes within the paper to make it go a lot, lot darker. So we can do some of that. <clears throat> start to get some more three-dimensionality to the um, to the drawing. Work that termination line a little bit more. 